Hey guys! In episode 4 of Star Wars The Acolyte, it was amazing to see how the bond between two females can develop in a really short space of time. It was so heartwarming to see that... Jackie Lon? It was really heartwarming to see that Jackie Lon would miss Osha because she was leaving Coruscant. But they'd only known each other for like... a couple of days. Came to say goodbye. You're not staying? Don't tell me you'll miss me. <laughs> Next time I'm on Coruscant, though, I'll look you up. I also thought that Osha made the right choice by not saying goodbye to Sol. I mean, I know he was happy to see her, but truth be told, he's responsible for the pain and suffering that she's going through. But I also thought it was so gracious of Osha to take the position that she was the one who had caused him enough trouble. Did you say goodbye to him? I've caused him enough trouble. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Astonishing. Also, at one point, I started to second guess myself as to who was under the mask. Now, as you can see, I'm a bit of a film buff. And I know a thing or two about writing for the screen. So the character... Kimir? 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 The character Kamir was giving me villain in disguise vibes. You know, the archetype of being seemingly harmless and goofy. Hey, you could have broken this. Fire! 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 R2! But at some point they turn out to be a wise sage or extremely villainous. I cannot teach him. The boy has no patience. or one of the greatest villain reveals of all time. Nah, no spoilers. I caught it when him and May were hiking to confront the Wookiee. He was acting a little too goofy, too clumsy for someone who's supposed to be well-versed in the art of creating poisons. He was also too in awe of May, which he should be because he's a man, but it just seemed a little too much. <laughs> If he does turn out to be the main villain, that would be a brilliant subversion of my expectations. I'm sure it would blow the minds of the toxic fans because they're just being weird about it. There was also another great bit of dialogue that I think will resonate throughout cinematic history and the greater cultural zeitgeist for a long time. Honestly, it undoubtedly demonstrates the brilliance of the writing team. She's a murderer. But she is still your family. Wow. I mean, think about that. Even if a family member is a murderer, you still have an obligation to be loyal to them regardless. I tell you, these writers... I'm sorry. And as if that example of profundity wasn't enough, they follow up the next scene with an affirmation of pronouns. Who's that? That's Basil. Is he? The episode ends with a brilliant subversion of expectations. When May decides to reclaim her body and come out from under the servitude of male domination by turning herself into the Jedi and facing the consequences of her crimes as any strong, capable feminist woman would. I don't need to do this anymore. Osha being alive changes everything. What I'm going to do is surrender myself to Kalnaka and then turn myself into the Jedi. I know this is a silly sci-fi show, but conceptually, this plot point was an incredible representation of art imitating life. So in this episode, there was the enduring message of being loyal to family no matter what they do, the affirmation of pronouns, and May's subversive decision to turn herself in. They throw in the twist that the main villain is already on the planet, and he's already taken out the Wookiee. <gasps> He's here. Things end on a fantastic cliffhanger when the Jedi team attacks. Watch out! Run! But they get thrown back by a powerful force push. I can't wait to see what happens next. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, you wouldn't get it.